uh, towards the typical uh, world of investments and risk management finance where the concept of probability can be applied. So uh, just as a quick uh, agenda to uh, understand this topic, initially uh, for uh, uh, initially, uh, for a few minutes, we would be uh, discussing on different concepts relating to the probability, right from uh, the definitions of the probability uh, to uh, uh, the different uh, key terms that we uh, talk in terms of uh, probabilities, the conditional probabilities, the mutually exclusive, the independence, the, the, uh, the joint probabilities, various uh, uh, rules relating to the probability, the addition rule, the multiplication rule, few important concepts relating to the probability. Then using the probability, how I can uh, go ahead in terms of computing the expected values, variance, standard deviations, etc. And that again takes me to the world of portfolio management. How can I use this concept of expected value and variance? for computing the mean return and the variance of the returns of the portfolio. So I would be discussing about it. And uh, towards the end, the two key areas involving probability, one is a Bayes formula or sometimes called as a Bayes theorem, which is uh, one of the uh, revolutions uh, in the world of uh, probability, which uh, we would be uh, looking at. And finally, uh, the principles of counting where we would be uh, discussing something about the permutations, combinations uh, and uh, the applications corresponding to that. So these are the different things that we are going to look at in this session. Having said that, see initially just to understand a few basic concepts of probability. First of all, the word probability comes from the uncertainty or probably the randomness, right? Uh, probability is chance, probability is uncertainty, probability is randomness in the outcome. So wherever I'm seeing that my possible outcomes, that the outcome that I'm going to get out of my, uh, uh, out of my experiment, it is going to be random in nature. I'm not sure what is going to be the outcome. I am uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it is more random in nature. All those kind of scenarios come under the scope of probability. So any variable which takes random outcomes is called as a random variable. Right, uh, probably when I am uh, looking at uh, the investment world, the daily return, the daily return on a stock, I can treat it as a random variable because tomorrow's uh, return, I am not sure how much I am going to get. There could be a gain uh, of 2%, there could be a loss of 2%, there could be a gain of 5%. There could be no profit, no loss. I'm not sure what all possibilities are going to be there. But in some cases, at least, uh, uh, let's say when I'm uh, throwing a dice, what value is going to come up on the top of the dice? I'm not sure. Even that is random. But what is happening is there are only a few possibilities that can come up there. Either one, two, three, four, five, six. But in this case, the possible outcomes are almost infinite in number. I can get almost any number as a, a return, as a percentage change over the previous period. But in both the cases, the outcome is random in nature and any of the possible values are going to come. So any variable which we are looking at, whose value is going to be a random in nature or which is going to have an uncertain value, those all are called as random variables. So modeling of the random variables and understanding of the random variables is an important uh, aspect in the journey towards understanding probability. Now each of these random variables 
can have different outcomes. So these are called as outcomes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are here 2%, minus 2%. They are different kinds of outcomes. So whatever the value that a random number can take or on today, what did it take? That is an outcome. What came out of the experiment for today? Those are the outcomes. And sometimes I may be more interested in looking at what is the chance of occurrence when I am looking at probability, I am more focused on what is the chance of occurrence of a single outcome. So what is the chance that I get a 6 when I throw a dice or what is the chance I get a 5% return tomorrow. So it could be a single outcome or it could be a series of outcomes. So what is the chance that I get a return greater than 2% tomorrow? So it's a series, 2, 2.5, 2.1, 2.2, all of them come under the greater than 2% scenario. There are many possible outcomes that are coming into this particular scenario. Whereas when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at uh, the, the dice case, the possibilities are any one. So probably I can talk about a series of outcomes means series of outcomes means what is the prop, what is the chance of getting an even number when I throw a dice. So that is what is associated with the event. So these are called as events, either a single outcome or a series of outcomes. All these, whatever is our interest, Whatever is of uh, interest as a part of our study, we are calling them as events. So any probability we try to find, we try to find the probability of an event, probability of an occurrence of an event. So it could be a single outcome or it could be a series of outcome, but we enter into the con computation of the probability associated with the event, probability of getting an odd number, probability of getting a return greater than 2%. So all these are different events, all right? So in some cases, what could happen is the events, whatever we have selected or the event, whatever I want to monitor, the event whatever I want to uh, monitor, let's say I am taking two different sets of events which I would like to monitor. One is the event A which says the probability of getting an odd number on the dice. When I throw a dice, what is the chance that I get an odd number? Whereas on the other side, I am looking at an event B, which says what is the probability of getting an even number on the dice. Now, if I look at these two events specifically, if this event is occurring, this event has no chance to occur. Because if the number that, if the outcome that is coming to me is an odd number, it cannot be an even number at that point in time or vice versa. If it is an even number, it cannot be an odd. So whenever I'm looking at two or more different events, when the chance of occurring of the first event or the event A, if the event A has occurred, event B cannot occur and vice versa. Then I say that events A and B are mutually exclusive. If one event occurs, the other cannot occur. But on the other side, if I am saying A is an event which is getting an even number, B is an event which is getting a number greater than 4. Now these two are not mutually exclusive because if 6 is the number that is coming, it is even as well as it is greater than 4. So if the event A has occurred, event B also might occur. 
So whenever I am looking at two events, if the situation is the event A occurs, the event B cannot occur or vice versa, then we call those two events as mutually exclusive events. So when I throw a dice, I'm looking at uh, events of getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the events, if I'm taking them as 6 different events, all 6 are mutually exclusive because if 1 occurs, 2 cannot occur, 3 cannot occur, 4 cannot occur, 5 or 6. So they become mutually exclusive events. And in case I'm able to list out list out all possible outcomes if as a part of the events if i am seeing that all possible outcomes are going to come then all those events together are called as exhaustive events when i am taking a set of exhaustive events what i mean by them is in one event or the other i see that almost uh, i see that all the outcomes are coming up i see that all the outcomes are coming up in some form or the other probably if i'm saying a is an event getting an even number b is an event getting